So, once again, the internet is not working, which means no stream this afternoon. So I'm gonna run a couple of errands that I've been putting off and uh, try to be somewhat productive. And I figured I'd give you guys another one of these day in the life kind of vlog style things. So the first thing I'm gonna do is return this to Best Buy. So this is my favorite mouse. I absolutely adore this mouse. I love all the buttons on the side. I love how comfortable it is. It's really my favorite mouse. The downside though is that I've gone through four of them in about 18 months. Uh, they just are not that reliable. They don't seem to last that long. Uh, I think it's the internal memory in it. It just, there's something about that internal memory that just seems to, I don't know if it fries or if it disconnects from the board or something like that, but all of a sudden your macros don't work anymore. Your assigned keys to the many side buttons don't work anymore. Uh, and that's what I'm having a problem with right now. Luckily I bought a two year replacement plan. So I'm gonna go just exchange it for another one. One of the things about doing YouTube and Twitch all the time is sometimes it just feels good to get out of the house, whether it's just running errands or whatever you're doing. Maybe you just go eat lunch at a restaurant, even if it's by yourself. It just feels good to get out of the house and out in public. So. Uh, even though I'm disappointed that the Twitch stream was canceled today, I am kind of happy just to be out running around. One of the things that some of you may know, some of you might not know, I know Beastly tweeted about this earlier today, is that it looks like we're going to shut down the Revolver Live podcast. And uh, this is something that none of us are actually that happy about, right? It's, it's, it's a funny feeling. The reason for it is there's no internal strife, there's no internal drama or anything like that. Everybody involved in the podcast actually loves and enjoys spending time with everybody else in the podcast. It, it's one of the things that made the podcast so enjoyable to do uh, for the uh, probably just under a year that we did it. I think the, the ultimate issue is that we just each individually started to run out of time to do it. And it being on Sunday nights, even if you have time on Sunday night that's technically open, it's Sunday night. That's a, often a family time for everybody. And I know I've been doing that show or the Beastly Thoughts show for years now on Sunday nights. Beastly has as well. Um, and it's it's gotten to a point, I think, that we just kind of need that time open. Now, a lot of that is because there's other commitments that have started to intrude on our weekends. As many of you know that I'm a photographer um, and I work a lot on the weekends doing photography. Also with DCP doing a weekly Saturday podcast, Saturday used to be the day that I made sure that I spent with family, right? It's like, even if I was busy all day Sunday, I mean, doing photography in the morning, then coming home and doing Beastly Thoughts or Revolver at night, I always made sure that I had time for family stuff, date night with my wife, that kind of stuff on Saturday. But doing DCP is kind of intruded into that a little bit. Um, so my weekends got a lot more crowded, which to be honest, demotivated me to do Revolver. I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. But I'm not the only one. Uh, Beastly started doing, uh, well, he re revived the Beastly Thoughts show with some of the original cast. Um, Wilson actually started doing uh, the Rezocast on Thursday nights, which gives him a great opportunity to talk about Destiny. So it's a funny thing. As much Destiny talk as there was on Revolver, I never really wanted it to be there, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, because, you know, I do DCP, and because I have a YouTube channel almost solely devoted to Destiny, it was kind of like, it just seemed like I was, I was going over the same conversation again. And I think for Wilson in particular, this is a much, it's a really good move for him to get on the Rezocast. He's a really entertaining guy. I don't need to tell you guys that. He's, he's just fun to be around. He's fun to listen to. He's got awesome thoughts and opinions about the game. And I think he's going to be a really strong addition to Rezocast. And he'll be able to talk about Destiny much more on Rezocast instead of the random bullshit that we we made him talk about on, uh, on, on Revolver. So 
I'm really happy for Wilson. I'm really happy for Beasley. And I miss the hell out of Gary. Gary, as you guys know, had to leave a few months ago for personal reasons. He just needed to devote more time to uh, to work and family. And, you know, we understood that. We missed him dearly. Uh, and to be honest with you, the show was never the same after Gary left. And I would always hope that Gary would come back. As time moved on, it looked less and less likely. And you know, there was a moment, I think it was like December of last year, where it looked like Beastly was going to, you know, have to leave the show. And Gary had actually said at that point, like, if Beastly, if you're leaving, I don't know that, you know, we want to do the show anymore. It's not the same without everybody involved. And I felt the same way when Gary left. It's like, I just wasn't so sure I wanted to do the show anymore without Gary because it, it wasn't Revolver anymore. It wasn't that crew was what made that show so special and Gary was a huge part of that uh, and I'm not blaming Gary for like killing the show or anything far from it like I love Gary I got no hard feelings uh, he did what he had to do to make his family happy and uh, I don't I don't blame him at all for that um, but just to go you know it just goes to show it's like everybody sort of you know got busy whether it was Sunday specifically or over the weekend or, you know, just doing other podcasts. I know everybody, it seemed like everybody on the show kind of started doing another podcast. Um, and Revolver, I don't know, we, we started to lose our way with Revolver, I felt like. We we weren't as excited about doing it every episode. You, you could tell that in just the chat. Uh, we have a DM that's just set up of the Revolver host and it just got, you know, more sparse and more sparse. It was we just weren't talking about like the upcoming episode as much as the last you know maybe like last year like late 2017 we were all very excited about it and the passion for the show I felt like was starting to drain out of the show and I felt like the show reflected that a little bit too the topics weren't as good the banter about the topics weren't as good and uh, you know I'm gonna miss the show and uh, I'm certainly gonna miss that opportunity the funny thing about me is it's much easier for me to hang out with somebody if I schedule it, right? If some, like, if one of my friends calls me up and says, "Hey, man, you want to hang out? Hang out tonight? You want to go to a, you know, a bar and get a couple of drinks tonight?" I'm like, "No, man." <laughs> like, yeah, of course I want to, but I'm, I'm kind of booked. You know, I got this going on, I got that going on. I've, I've committed to doing this, so it's very hard for me to just be spontaneous like that. Even though I like to be spontaneous like that, since I got married. Since I've started YouTube, since I started with DCP and uh, with streaming, spontaneity is a lot harder for me. Everything's got to be kind of regimented and scheduled. Otherwise, things get missed. Things get um, kind of put aside. Things get put on the back burner and then never put back in. So, what my fear is is that, like, you know, I'll lose contact with Beasley, with Gary, with Wilson. And I, I sincerely hope that doesn't happen because I love those guys and the personal relationships. Uh, that we've formed over the years, uh, I'd hate to see go, but that's not what caused Revolver to kind of fall apart, or fall apart is probably a bad word. That's not why we decided to put an end to Revolver. It was really just about time and passion, right? It's like there's only so much time in a specific week, and I feel like everybody, everybody kind of had put their, had filled up their time almost too much, including me. Um, and we just, I think that Revolver was the, you know, the, the weak, weak link, unfortunately, is we just needed to free up some time. And for me, having started doing DCP or the SideQuest podcast every week on Saturday, that put a lot of pressure on me family-wise. Um, so the, the obvious solution was, well, one of those two things has to go. Um, and unfortunately, it's it's a revolver this time, and we've just missed so many shows lately. I think it made it an easier decision, right? Is I can't remember the last time we did a show at this point. I, I think it's been three or four weeks, and even before that, it was very spotty. It, frankly, it's been spotty ever since Gary left. I think the whole crew felt the same way. It's like it's just not the same show. <laughs> without Gary there, right? Is Gary was such an integral part of that show. He was so fun to be around. Um, so, like, I sincerely hope that maybe it, in in the future uh, we can get together and do, you know, a different kind of thing, maybe a monthly thing, or you know, I don't know. I don't know what that what that 
takes shape as, but I'd sincerely like to um, get that group of four people together on the regular for some kind of activity, right? Whether it's, you know, something besides Revolver or just like a game night where we just, you know, we just like have a Revolver reunion game night or something like that. Because that, the dynamic of the four of us was just so fun. It, it was just so enjoyable to be a part of. And uh, I'm really going to miss that. I'm really going to miss having that scheduled time to hang out with those three guys uh, on a weekly basis. But really, there's no, there's no hard feelings. I don't think on anybody's part. Um, everybody, you know, kind of saw the writing on the wall. And when, you know, we're in the DMs and it kind of came like, do we need to end this? I think everybody was pretty much in agreement. Um, so, you know, nobody, I don't think there's anybody saying like, well, I'm really pissed off that everybody decided to quit Revolver. Uh, I think everybody kind of was united in that. It felt like that show had run its course and it was time for all of us to move on to other projects. The Honda dealer just called. So they want to do an appraisal on the Accord, the Honda Accord. It's a 2015 Honda Accord that I currently drive. The lease is up, it's time to turn it in and make a decision on what I'm going to do for my next vehicle. So I've got a couple of thoughts on that. Maybe you guys can help me out. One is, it's a 2015 Honda Accord that's in pretty good shape. It's a nice car, it's somewhat boring. I don't love the car, but it's a very practical car. <laughs> you know, it's the kind of car that when you bought, your father would be proud of you for buying such a practical car. Uh, but I don't love it. And uh, so I'm thinking, uh, I could go and get another Honda Accord, but get the sport model with a manual transmission. Uh, leases on those are fairly inexpensive. I could keep this car. I could uh, buy it out of the lease. I think it would cost me somewhere in the range of $14,000 to uh, buy this car, the one that I'm currently driving. Um, but I also, I was kind of looking around the internet and I saw some pretty good deals on the Acura TLX, which is basically a Honda Accord, but it's like the Acura version, and there's more there's more luxury, and it's a little quicker, and it's a little nicer. I don't know, if you guys have any input on that, I'd love to hear it. The, the new 2019 Honda Accord looks a lot nicer than the 2015 does. It's a brand new redesign. And uh, the, the Acura looks really nice too. I haven't test driven either of these cars, so maybe I'll go and test drive them uh, tomorrow or the next day and kind of see what I think of them. But uh, getting a manual sport Accord is somewhat appealing to me and they're relatively affordable too. Just figured I'd come and take a look at a couple of the Acura TLXs to see if I like them. Not a bad looking car, that beak, I don't know. That beak is a little something else. Not a bad looking car though. Well, now that I know that somebody's gonna be looking at the car, I guess I might as well clean it so it's not currently raining but there's like an 80 percent chance of rain for the rest of the week so i'm gonna try and get a quick wash in and vacuum out the interior and see where we end up 